Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm AJ Monte, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA. Before you get too far into this video, I'd like to ask that you pause it, go back to the link from last week's video, and pay particular attention to what I said at the four-minute mark and also at the seven minute mark where I said towards the end of this week, we could see a rally. That's exactly what's happened. And I am not moving that downside target. This is more or less a repeat of what we saw last time with a rally on light volume. Take a look at what's happened here today. We gapped up on lower volume. Oscillators are moving up. And as I suggested last week, we're probably going to zigzag our way right down and eventually taking out the June lows and on to the March 2020 lows because we are most definitely in phase two of this bear market. Remember, there's three phases of a bear market. We just completed phase one. We're entering phase two. And phase two on the down leg could be more severe than the downside on phase one. So be very cautious about that for any long-term investors who are in the buy and hold camp. Now, again, if you put this video on pause and jumping back in right here, let me just draw a couple of lines for you. Taking a look at my little blue crayon mark, I think Monday we could go a little bit higher, possibly into the opening on Tuesday a little bit higher, but I do believe we're going to see a drop in volume on those days, at which time the 20 day moving average right there is going to act as resistance. Remember, for as long as the market is dropped below that moving average, the moving average will be drawn down to the price of the stock. So that will act as a resistance point, very similar to what we saw back here early in the month. Now, let's take a look at where that forecast line is, just to make sure everyone keeps note of that. That downside target is still in place at 306.09. There is a gap down below the market. I do believe that is going to fill. And with that, let me go to the VIX because that's going to lead me to the S&P. As you can see from this chart of the VIX, we are right at that 20 period moving average. There is still a very slight gap below here on the VIX that could fill. I don't know if it will but it could fill. Remember, that VIX, if that gap fills, there's a 100% chance that it will reverse from that gap fill point and move higher. So with that, I'm still keeping this green dotted line as my upside target on the VIX. And it's very important that option traders pay close attention to that because my upside target right there at 28.53 is something that all of our option members are looking at because today we added some put spreads on because the volatility was so low. And if you're a member of the option Oracle, make sure that you get that alert in the member page. If you're interested in picking up some of my trade alerts, just contact Market Rebellion. The phone number is in the description box below. And so remember, for the most part, the VIX is inversely related to the S&P. So if the VIX drops just a little bit more, the S&P will start to rally. And then once the VIX starts to turn, the S&P will pivot and start to go lower. Hence the reason why I'm not moving any of my downside targets on the major markets. So again, that upside target on the VIX, 28.53. And with that, let's hop to the spiders, ticker symbol SPY. You can see that we gapped up on the spiders today, but uh-oh, look down below. We have a drop in volume. That is a conflict, absolute conflict. When the price is going up and the volume is dropping, that does not support a strong rally. In fact, on the contrary, that tells us that the buyers are slowing down. Now, we have a mixed batch of signals right here because the CCI just crossed over the momentum line. So because of that cross, we could go another two days higher. But again, I think that 20 period moving average is going to act as resistance. And it's going to look something like that, what we saw earlier in the month right there. So again, if you are short, be patient. Keep your stops in place, of course. But the best way to trade this market right now, in my opinion, is by put spreads, especially diagonal put spreads. And again, if you're far into options, call it market rebellion. Take some courses. doesn't hurt to learn. Even if you're not trading right away, 
learning, keeping that learning curve up is a good thing. And knowing what to do when the markets are going down is a very comforting thing as well. Very few people are making money in a down market. I'll tell you that right now. And those who are trying to buy on the bounces, most of those people fail to take their profits and then prices drop to a new low and now they're sucking wind on these long positions that they bought earlier in the week or earlier in the month. And so I'm just giving you a little tidbit there on how to trade this market. A lot of our members are having a great time right now. They're relaxed and they're asking questions and they're getting answers to those questions. And it's really a fun time with our option membership. All right. So that downside target is still going to remain in place. I believe that October is going to be a red October. It's usually the worst month of the year. It's, September's right up there with it, but October is usually the worst. And so that downside target for SPY is 379.55. Now let's hop to the Qs. Take some QQQ. There we go. Same story, really. We're keeping that downside target right there at 287.39. We have a moving average that's going to act as resistance right there. We're not quite above that momentum line, that zero line right there. So if we do cross, maybe Monday, Tuesday, we'll see a little bit higher. I'm not going to redraw that line. There's no need to do that. I'm just going to keep it in place and giving you the idea of what we could see earlier in the week. A move up to that moving average and eventually come right back down. Don't worry too much about that timeline. That's a hard target line that's drawn horizontal on the chart, I'm just making that easier for people to see so they could track that week after week. Okay, so that is the cues. Now taking a look at IWM, you can see here that my zip line is still in place down here at the 168 level, which is from the lows back here on July 14th. I did say we'll have an ABCD zigzag going on before we hit down to that support level and that is still in place. Remember, higher price action on lower volume tells us that the buyers are weakening. Even though we had a gap up, that's not a strong gap up. Remember, the moving average is like the other markets that we looked at. We're going to hit resistance at that 20 period moving average. So again, just to draw some lines here for you, Monday and Tuesday could go a little bit higher, meet resistance at that 20, and then start to pull back. I'm keeping that horizontal line in place right around 168 as my downside target. Now, taking a look at the Qs, which is basically the tech sector, you can see we came close to hitting that target down there at 287.39. We then bounced, oscillators started going up. And again, this is the same story as the other markets. We could see a little bit of a rally. Now, the difference between the Qs and the rest of the markets is that we have a slight increase in volume, very, very slight, hard to see on the way up. But this 20 period moving average again is going to act as resistance like it did back here. So if you're long, trail your stops up, protect any profits that you might have. If you're in with our membership and you're trading options, keep those spread positions rolling. Be patient. Make sure that you understand how time decay works because that's the way calendars make money for us is the short sides of those spreads make money and that pays down the cost basis of the long positions that we hold. Now just real quick, before I get into the world news, let me just take a quick look at silver because some people were asking about that. On Wednesday, we did a forecast and I put the zip line out to our members who are part of the Oracle Hour where I go through 40 to 50 stocks in about an hour's time. And so silver did a nice bounce here and the upside target is still at 17.54. I said we would move up to that moving average. Momentum is still looking good. And I had one other request for Ethereum. Now I can't make this a... Uh, a common practice of going through all the stock symbols that are being requested. But I do believe that Ethereum, Bitcoin could see a little bit of a rally here. We have the momentum shifting higher. But what is most impressive is that Ethereum has a close over that 20 period moving average on higher volume. So there's a gap above the market. I could even draw a horizontal line there to fill that gap, I think is a high probability that that will happen. So that gap fill is going to be up there around 1388, at which time we could see a little bit of resistance up there because it's leaving gaps below the market. Let's talk a little bit about the world news. Many of you know that one of my favorite sectors right now for bullish activity is going to be in energy. And this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that Russia has basically weaponized 
the commodity that they have is natural gas. And until sanctions are lifted, he's basically said it straight out that the Europeans are going to freeze over the winter until those sanctions are lifted. And he's using some harsh words to get that point across, but he's basically got them between a rock and a hard place. And he's basically controlling all the chips at this particular point. Now, remember, I was talking about energy and the cost of energy. Look what's happening in California, still going through the roof. And you might think, well, that's not really going to affect me if California is going through a, an energy crisis right now. But this headline just came out two days ago that the blackout risks in California have now spurred the demand for diesel generators. Now, remember, this comes on the heels of their governor making an announcement that they're going to go all electric vehicle by 2035. And this has really got a lot of anger in their face at this particular point. While it might seem funny, it's really not, because this is actually what we're seeing. This came out through Twitter. This is one of the gubernatorial candidates in California right now putting out this photo of a Tesla car with a generator strapped to the trailer hitch right there. And I'm telling you, this is a serious problem because for us, you know, as energy costs go up in California, the cost of produce is going to go up. Anything coming out of California, all these added costs are going to be baked into those prices that we ultimately pay. And that's only going to contribute more to inflation. Now, talking about the general markets, for those of you that have never heard about the Schiller PE, please do your research, look into that. Robert Schiller, who is a professor, came up with this P.E. where he basically takes the earnings adjusted for inflation over the years and divides that into the price of the stock to get the calculation. I'll leave it at that. You could do more research on your own. But this chart right here shows something that's very interesting because we are now at the second highest level since 1871 on the Schiller P.E. ratio. And you can see what's happened when we've gotten over 30 in the past. Here's Black Tuesday back in 1929. Here's right before the crash of 2000. This is right above 25 in 2008 right here. And we still crashed. Now we're coming off that high and moving lower. But that's not a good sign right now because that price movement to the downside is basically because the price of the shares are dropping, not because the earnings are increasing. You see, so there's still a risk of extreme downside movement in the general markets as we look at price versus earnings. Now, again, there's only been a few times that that's happened where it's gotten over 30. And you have to see that the average is around 15 to 16. So we see these spikes right now, and that usually happens right before market crashes. So here's another signal to keep an eye on. When you turn on the financial networks and you hear people talking about how bullish they are, please understand there is another phase that we have to deal with, and that's phase two. After phase two is over in this bear market, phase three is the most severe of the three phases, and I'm basing that on Dow theory. Nothing more, nothing less. Charles Dow was brilliant. I still follow his six tenets of Dow theory, and again, something that I would encourage all of you to look into and study, Dow theory. Now, we hear about the Inflation Reduction Act. This is coming out through the Gatestone Institute. You can read here along the lines here that I've highlighted in yellow. This is absolutely not even, it's not even questionable. It's absolutely going to increase inflation, especially among the middle class Americans. And so this itself is baking its way into the cost of goods and services. That's only going to add fuel to this fire we call stagflation. And this is something that I talked about two months ago. As interest rates start to go higher, that's what we're expecting to see coming from the Fed, another 75 basis point hike. And if you look at what that does to the junk bond market, that is triggering the dominoes to go down. And as more and more defaults start to show up, the acceleration and momentum into these defaults is only going to magnify over time. And it's already started, so you can't ignore it. No one's really talking about it, but you absolutely shouldn't ignore it. Now, this is the big deal. This one right here, this slide. Read, read along with me as I describe this to you. This is a good person to be following on Twitter. It's Sentiment Trader. And he's been studying basically put call ratios for over 22 years. And what happened last week is absolutely phenomenal. 
institutional traders bought over $8 billion worth of put options. Now, whether you know about options or not, understand this. A put option is used in two ways, to speculate in a down market or to protect against risk in a down market. Institutions bought over $8 billion worth of these puts and less than a billion in calls. So if we go back and look at the markets right here, let me go back and just take the SPY, for instance, and we go look at the options. Look what happened today alone. These are really big numbers, and I'm going to highlight this for you right here as I get to the big numbers. All right. Now, look at the number of puts that are bought at 390. Now, again, whether you know options or not, understand this is an insurance policy where institutions believe there is risk that we could drop below 390. Here is another big number at the $400 strike. Look at what just happened today. 23,000 more puts were added to this open interest, and 17,000 of these 400 puts were added. Now, if we drop below 400, let me just tell you this. If we drop below 400 in the SPY before October, all of these puts will be exercised, which means sell orders will be thrown into the system, and it could push the markets even lower. If we drop below 390, well, then that gets magnified and you're going to see a much more intense sell-off now let's go back and look at the chart 40390 remember those numbers right so if we look at that look where look where my support level is here my target that's below both of those it's below 400 it's below 390 and if we start dropping below 400 the market gets more bearish and again, something that other than John Najarian and Pete Najarian, other than those two guys, they're not really talking too much about option volume on these financial networks. And it's something that you really have to pay very close attention to. So I still remain excited for those that are positioned on the downside. I am still concerned about those who are in the buy and hold camp who are not doing anything to protect themselves. But all you have to do is make sure you're following the charts keeping your stops in place if you're long, being patient if you're short. And until then, have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you next Friday. So long. Hello, John Najarian here. If you want to trade like a rebel, if you want to party like a rebel, well, you got to come to RebelCon 2022. It's going to be in Dallas, Texas at the fabulous Four Seasons Resort. We start the 21st of September, go until September 24th. It will be more fun and more live trading than we've ever done before. That's why it's called RebelCon 2022. We're going to have barbecues and double the amount of live trading. So if you want to book that now, make sure you do because the guest speakers, as soon as we announce those, this thing's going to be sold out. It's going to be something you do not want to miss, limited to 250 people. Diamond, platinum, and gold packages are selling out. Sign up now for RebelCon 2022 at the Four Seasons in Dallas, Texas. Welcome to the Rebellion.